Hi everybody, so I've wanted to build a real engine for quite a while, but I don't have the shop to do that. However, this is an air compressor. Now let me show you this in a bit more detail. So this is the air compressor bit. Now I don't want to ruin my own air compressor because it works just fine, but this is the bit minus the tank and minus the drive motor, and I bought this one from Viva. Now in case you're thinking I'm having a bit of a love affair with Viva, I suppose it's kind of true, but they sent us that diesel heater, remember, and that diesel heater's pretty good, and we've got their lead is pretty good, so I figured when I saw this on the website, this would be pretty good, so I went ahead and bought it. They didn't send it me, I bought it, okay? Just to let you know that love affair isn't extending too far. So I bought this thing because I figured that this thing could be turned into an engine. So if we take the head off, what we see, little valve plates, there we go. And in there, we've got a cast iron block and a couple of pistons. Now, all of these engines work exactly the same way. There is some kind of material that we force on that piston head which drives it down turns this and then we have to let that exhaust out. Petrol engine, steam engine, compressed air engine, hot air engine, they're all the same way. What differs with them is the valve setup. Once we put the head back on, we need to have something in there to let that in and out, you know, a pipe to let it in and out. And on that pipe we put a valve and the valve is what controls the gas when it goes in there, wherever that gas is from. If it's hot air that's going to expand, if it's steam that's going to expand, if it's fuel that you're going to burn, etc, etc, etc. So they're all the same. All we have to do is create an inlet, outlet and a valve. Once we've done that, we can convert any engine to any other engine. So you can convert a petrol engine to compressed air if you want. You can convert a compressor of this type, the piston type, to any other kind of engine if you want, and you see people doing it. All they're doing is creating a valve setup, and of course, timing that valve, and that's exactly what we need to do. So, this bit, all the gears, the pistons, the cylinder, the piston block, and the pulley around here, we, we don't need to do jack to it. We put that to one side, because that is the bit of engineering I can't do, and it's ready-made. Now, I bought this for, I think it was about £99, which is pretty reasonable when you think what it is. This is the bit we're going to modify, and the bit we're going to modify is the valve. Now, valves come in a whole variety of types. So there are basically six different types of valves to control the in and out of the gases. There's bump valves, piston valves, slide valves, rotary valves, pop-up valves, and my own favourite, Solenoids. Now, bump valves are perhaps the simplest. All they are is a free-floating pin and the piston hits it to open the valve. Now, bump valves are usually returned by a spring and if you're using it in a heat engine, that spring can anneal and fail. And to solve that, what they came up with was the piston valve. Now, the piston valve has that valve pin attached to the piston head instead of free-floating and, of course, it does away with the spring. But it does introduce other problems in that that guide has got to be pretty accurate the seal around that valve has got to be really quite good. The slide valve is perhaps the most common type of valve on steam engines. It's driven by an eccentric from the crankshaft and it's basically a D-shape that slides up and down in a valve chest allowing the steam in and out. And its popularity is because it is just so robust and easy to manufacture. And you see this in a variety of designs from flat designs to circular piston designs. Now, rotary valve come in plate or rod. I like the rod kind because it's basically a bar with a hole in it and that hole lines up with the inlet and the outlet as it rotates. And one thing about them is they allow for the possibility of a linear engine. Instead of having a rotating crankshaft, the thing can just move up and down, attach it to a linear alternator. Bingo, you've got yourself a pretty mechanically simple engine-driven generator. Now, the rotary obviously can be controlled by a stepper motor, for example. The poppet valve is perhaps the one you're most familiar with. It's a mushroom shape that's in just about every internal combustion engine that there is, and it's operated by a push rod or a camshaft and some rocker arms and retained by a spring. And that one is just everywhere. The final type is the solenoid type, and they're already available for internal combustion engines and they've been used in marine diesel engines since about 2003. 
The advantages of them, obviously, are the control. You can control the timing, the setup and changing in timing through the engine control unit without all that tedious mucking around with chains and timing belts. Of course, you get various flavours of those basic designs, but those are the basic designs. Now, my own favourites are things like the rotary valve that's controlled by a stepper motor or the um, solenoid valve because you don't have to create all of those linkages, meaning the engineering is very much more simplified. Now, you do, of course, need a computer control, but an Arduino will cope with something like that relatively easily. And then the only other thing you need is some kind of position centre so you can see or tell when that piston is top dead centre and then take your timing information from that. So, in summary, changing a piston driven device from one form to another, as a compressor to an engine, a petrol engine to a, an air engine, whatever it is, isn't a matter of changing the entire engine. It's a matter of adapting the cylinder head, particularly the valve type and the valve timing. When you do that, there should be no need to change anything else. I mean, that obviously depends on how you're going to control the valve timing. You might have to create a few linkages if you're going to do a mechanical uh, timing. But that, in, in essence, is all you actually need to do. So our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to change that compressor into a air or steam driven engine with nothing more than a valve change. That's what we're going to do next, but I thought I would go through all of this stuff for you because I thought it was of great interest for people who wanted to create their own engines from engines they already had lying around. A particularly easy one, incidentally, is petrol engine to air engine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.